Yeah, in this video, I'm going to discuss about this uh, d orbital contraction from the chemical bonding. So I'm going to deal with why uh, PCL5 exists and PH5 does not exist based on this d orbital contraction. Yes, when we look at the structure of this PCL5 here, it is explained that this uh, PCL5 undergoes this sp3 d hybridization. Yeah, sp3 d hybridization where now, when we look at this P in the ground state, its electronic configuration is uh, atomic number is 15. So one is two, two is two, two P A six, three is two, and yes, three P three. So three uh, electrons in this P enter the total number of five electrons in this valence shell. Uh, but in order to explain, but only three unpaired electrons in this ground state, but it should form bonds with five other uh, chlorine atoms in order to explain the formation of uh, bonds with five chlorine atoms here. So one of the electrons from this p orbital will get excited from the 3s to the 3d orbitals here, resulting in the formation of five unpaired electrons in this excited state of the phosphorus atom here. Now these five orbitals, which are in the valence shell of the phosphorus, that is 1s, 3p, and 1d orbitals undergo the hybridization, resulting in the formation of sp3d hybrid orbitals, that 1s, uh, 3p orbitals, and 1d orbital will result, I mean, will participate in the hybridization, resulting in the formation of five sp3d hybrid orbitals here, wherein these sp3d hybrid orbitals after hybridization will overlap with the 3p orbitals of this chlorine. Now this chlorine, we know that it is 17. So 1s2, 2s2, uh, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p5. So there is a presence of thus one electron that is unpaired in the 3p orbitals of this chlorine atom. Now, uh, now this can participate of the opposite spin here. So this can participate in the overlapping of uh, this particular p orbital with the sp3d hybrid orbital of this phosphorus resulting in the formation of this pcl5. Now, when we look at the geometrical structure of this here, PCL5, uh, PCL5 here, yes, this is the central fluorine atom, which is sp 3 dehybridization. Yes, sp 3 dehybridization resulting in the formation of five sp 3 d orbitals, hybrid orbitals, which can now overlap with the 3p orbital of this chlorine uh, having an electron with the opposite spin now resulting in the formation of this PCL5 by trigonal bipyramidal geometry with three chlorines, I mean three hybrid orbitals arranging in trigonal planar manner and uh, uh, other two CLs are present above and below the plane of this in order to have this minimum repulsion. So this is trigonal bipyramidal geometry. And Yes, now coming to this, uh, we know that the S, P and D orbitals, according to this valence bond theory, what he said is only those orbitals which are having almost of the same energy can participate in the hybridization. But we know that this S and P, I mean the D orbitals are of high energy when compared to that of this S and P. So the d orbital size is more, that is radius is more, the size is more. As we know that size is directly proportional to the energy as the size is increasing, the energy is also increasing. The d orbital size is very large when compared to that of this S and P. So the energy will also be more. So how can this participate in the hybridization with S and P if the energy is not matching? Only of comparable energy can take part in the hybridization. So the orbitals only with comparable energy, that means only very dif little difference in the energy when can participate in the hybridization. So how can this be explained? This can be, but we know that the PCL5 is forming and hybridization is uh, undergoing this hybridization, this phosphorus, and now this is uh, overlapping this uh, each with this chlorine atom resulting in trigonal bipyramidal geometry and PCL5 do exist. So how can you explain the existence of this PCL5? So this existence of this PCL5 can be explained based on this d orbital contraction. So what is this d orbital contraction? Let's see it. Now, 
this phosphorus now is surrounded by five chlorine atoms, which are more electronegative than phosphorus. We know this. So this is high electronegative. So this will try to draw the electrons closer towards this. The bonded pair of electrons are now drawn closer towards this. As a result, this will get the partial negative charge and this is going to get the partial positive charge. So the presence of this positive charge on this phosphorus atoms, now the nucleus of this will try to draw the outer electrons more closer towards this. That is 3p, 3s, 3p and 3d orbitals. As a result, the contraction of this will occur. The electrons in this orbitals are drawn more closer towards it as a result because of the partial positive charge which is present on this phosphorus. As a result, the contraction of these orbitals will occur. So we know that all spt orbitals will contract, but the contraction is more in d orbitals. So as, as it is contracting, the size is decreasing. As the size decreases, energy also decreases. We know that the size is directly proportional to the energy. So energy is also decreasing. So now spd orbitals now will have the same energy of the compatible energy. Now this can take part in the hybridization because of this d orbital contraction. So now the formation of PCL5 can be explained based on this d orbital contraction. So the, that is how, because of the presence of this highly electronegative chlorine atoms around this phosphorus, this will get the partial positive charge. As a result, this will try to attract the electrons, uh, outermost electrons towards it. As a result, the d orbital contraction will take place. And the d orbital contraction is more when compared to that of this SNP. So because of this contraction, the size decreases and the energy also decreases. So S, P and D of almost of the same energy now can participate in the hybridization, resulting in the formation of SP3D hybrid orbitals in the PCL5. So PCL5 do exist. Now, now do you think this PH5 exists? <clears throat> no, this doesn't exist because hydrogen is not electronegative. Uh, as chlorine, so it's uh, almost, I mean, not electronegative, so it cannot draw the electrons from the fluorine, I mean, from the phosphorus, so no d orbital contraction, so pH5 does not exist at all. In the same way, the existence of SF6 can also explain because of the presence of highly electronegative six fluorine atoms on such phosphorus, which will try to draw the electron density towards it as a result. Partial positive charge is developed on this sulfur atom. So d orbital contraction will take, uh, take place resulting in sp3d2 hybridization and sf6 formation can be explained based on this sp3d2 hybridization based on d orbital contraction. In the same way as sh 6 also does not exist because there is no d orbital contraction in this because of the less electronegativity of hydrogen compared to that of the sulfur. So, this is the orbital contraction. 